luckily, some clever guys, Isaac Newton and Leibniz, discovered, discovered calculus. Okay, so we can find the derivative of any equation, any equation we like. Y equals x squared, or even really ugly ones like y equals 3x to the 4 plus 2x squared minus 5. Anything you like, we can find the, find the derivative for. Okay? Now we're going to look at the, the basic method or the basic principles that underlie this method, and then you'll see a very simple way to apply it. We don't have to, we're going to do the long, long complicated way, and then we're going to follow it up with a very simple rule, which it makes it very easy to do calculus for any equation. Okay, so we've got this equation y equals x squared. Now, let's let's go back to our method of rise over run because there is there's some good stuff there we need to use. Okay, we've, again we've got a point, an initial point here, and a second point here, and we can use rise over run to make an approximation for a curved graph like a parabola, but it's only an approximation; it's not exact. Okay. But as we move this point here, this, this secondary point, this delta point, what's called the, the delta point, which means there's a change from this point here to this point here, we're going to call that change delta. And on the y-axis, there's also a change there, but because the change on the y-axis is dependent on this one, the same way y is dependent on x, sorry, phone, y is a function of x, so y is dependent on x. Delta, the, the, delta, the change in the y direction is dependent on this delta as well. So we're going to say y x plus delta, because this is x plus delta. Okay? So this is a good approximation, but as we make delta smaller, as we move this dot closer to this point here, our approximation gets better and better and better. Okay, if we zoomed in on that, we'd see that this this line, this uh, straight line that we're doing alongside the this line that we're doing on the on the graph, is becoming closer and closer, closer and closer to the um, <laughs> to the uh, actual rate of change on the graph at that point. Okay. So that's, that's a good clue for how we're going to do this. As delta gets smaller, or as it gets closer and closer to zero, to being no change at all, we get the answer. But as soon as we make it zero, then we've lost our rise over our run. So, okay, how are we going to get around that? Well, these guys come with a really clever, really clever way. Okay, they said, <coughs> we've got our graph. We've got rise over run. Okay, so that means we've got two points, same as always, rise over run gives us the derivative. Uh, what's it called? Derivative. Okay, so we've got y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So up to this point, it's exactly the same as when we were doing really simple gradients of straight lines. Okay. Now, putting this in different notation, it'll look exactly the same, but you'll find it'll be more helpful this way. Y, we all know that Y equals F of X. Okay, so let's replace Y, these Y's with F of X. So we've got F1 X minus F2 X. Okay, over x2 minus x1. Okay, now what's the difference between this x, sorry, this function and that function? Well, it's that delta again, isn't it? That's the difference between the two. That's what makes this one different to this one. That's what makes point x different, point x2 different to point x1. Okay, so let's include delta in that equation so we see that that's what's making the difference. Okay, f x plus delta minus f of x. So all this one here is, is the function of x with no change, and this one, it's got the change in it. That's all. 
That's all that's happened there. That's, that's still y2, that's still y1, and this is still x, but now we've got x plus delta instead of x2 minus x1, which is just x. Okay, so it's still exactly the same, but now this is something we can work with. Because now we've got this delta in here, we can, we can do a few things with this. Okay, so let's move over here to the right. Okay, now we've got f of x plus delta minus f of x, and over x plus delta minus x, so that's the rise over the run. Okay, now let's apply this to a simple equation like y equals x squared that we were looking at before. Let's use this in that. Okay. <coughs> f of x plus delta, so wherever there is x in this equation, we're going to replace it with x plus delta over here. Okay, so let's rewrite it. F, oh, sorry, we've got now x plus delta squared, I've replaced x with x plus delta, minus x squared, because f of x is just x squared. Okay, now we put that over the run, which is x plus delta minus 0.1, which is x. Okay, now let's expand this out and see what we've got. Expand this out, we get x squared plus 2x delta plus delta squared. I'll just expand that out. Minus x squared, that's still there on the end. And then x minus x, they cancel each other out. So we're left on the bottom with just delta. Okay, now, what's, what's, where's this going? Let's cancel these, these terms out here. That cancels, that cancels. Delta crosses out the delta there. And one of those deltas there, we've still got one there. So we end up with 2x plus delta. Okay, now these guys, Newton and uh, Leibniz, they did something really clever at this point. I don't think I would have thought of doing it. Probably no one else would have either. But they said, okay, well, we know with our graph that as the delta in our rise over run, as the delta gets smaller and we reduce this point here closer and closer to our first point, the approximation gets better and better. Okay, it's getting better and better. But as soon as we make it zero, the rise over the run collapses. There's no, there's no rise and no run anymore because we haven't moved anywhere at zero. What if we say, what if we come up with this concept as delta approaches zero? As the limit of delta approaches zero, that's what they, that's what they would say. So let's, let's imagine what would happen if it went to zero, but not actually get there. Okay, that's a, that's a tricky concept, and don't worry if that doesn't make 100% sense to you. But all we've, got to, all we've got to do at the moment is see what, see what it does when we apply it, and see what happens at the end, and then it'll make more sense later on once you become familiar with it. Okay, so if we're going to say delta is approaching zero, we can cancel it out, we can get rid of that delta because it's become zero, but it didn't actually become zero, okay? Now, all we're left with when we do that is 2x. Now, if you remember back to the old method that we used, why if, if our equation was um, y equals 2x, we found the gradient just by... Yeah, we found the gradient just by looking at the number in front. Well... With this method, it's pretty much done the same thing. We've, we've just been given a nice straight line gradient here, 2x. Okay, so that's, how, that's the first principles of calculus.